In this video, we're going to review section four of uh, chapter 29 of uh, Randy Knight's book. Uh, section four deals with uh, the magnetic field produced by a current. And we're going to start by summarizing the three main cases that uh, we're going to study. These three main cases are uh, straight wire, the field produced by a straight wire, and then the field produced by a loop is a current that is going around the loop, and the field produced by a solenoid, which is a coil from which you have the current entering on one end and coming out on the other end. <coughs> we can um, jump ahead and see that uh, in this case, if the current is going from left to right, you use your right hand pointing your thumb in the direction of the current and you curl the fingers and the only way that you can you're going to see that uh, the fingers will curl out from this part of the screen of the paper into curling down into here so this shows that the field up here is going to be coming out of the paper and going into here and this is represented by the dots and uh, the x's and the field will depend on the distance according to 1 over r. Mu0 is the constant, the permeability constant, and i is uh, the current. And as you move away from the, the wire, r gets larger and b gets smaller. So we have, this is denoted by many points here, and less points here, and even less up here, and so on. For the coil, we are showing the direction of the current as coming out from this. This is a cross section, of course. And this is uh, sh shows uh, the current coming out and circling around and going in this way. And to find the direction of the field, you have to take a small segment and use the right hand rule. Just point your finger, the thumb, in the direction of the current and curl the finger fingers and you will see that inside of the ring the field will go this way of course if we reverse the current coming out here and going into there then the field would reverse and the field is uh, at the center only at this point at the center of the ring is given by this in this section we're going to see we're going to calculate the field at any point on this axis but uh, right here at the center is given by this, where n is uh, the number of turns in case that we have not only a single turn, but a, a ring composed of many turns. And R, capital R, is the radius of uh, the coil. This uh, we're going to examine later in a different uh, section, but um, basically the field is going to be pretty uniform inside with no variation as a function of... Uh, the position inside of the of the, the loop and it's going to be given by this constant the number of turns per unit length number of turns per unit length times uh, the current here i'm going to run um, a video that Welcome shows to another unisurf physics vodcast obtained to using um, okay well, let's take a look at each of the coil configurations Let's look at this one first. As we can see, there's a green plastic former here. What that's to do is actually to hold the coils of copper wire. There's approximately 15 coils of enameled copper wire here. They loop around. There's 15 turns of wire on that. And you can see the two wires coming down there and they're terminated on these posts here. And lucky last, this one's actually got five coils, and on these formers there's actually 15 turns of copper wire on each. And if we look carefully on the bottom here, we'll see that the wire starts on this post here, comes up onto the coil, 15 turns, and then it loops. This one's the hardest one to shake up. You'll see that it gets funny patterns in it. Okay, and this one's the easiest one because there's lots of things through it, so it stirs it up really quickly. 
Okay, so let's look at the center one first. So we'll just connect the alligator clips to the posts. That's actually connected to a little Morse code tapping key, which when I press it, the current flows, and that's just sitting off to the side. And I think current flowing. Now I just press it down for a short period of time, just a few seconds, because we've got around five amps flowing, and this copper wire is fairly thin. And again, okay, not much is happening, so we'll stop there and let's examine what we've actually got. So we can see that the iron powder further out is still pretty evenly dispersed, but as we move in closer, we start to see it forms circles around the copper wire that's running through the center there. So what's this actually indicating? It's the coil of copper wire. There's about 15 turns on this. I'll connect up the terminals. Okay. I'll probably zoom in a little closer on this one. And we'll press the Morse code, tap a key, and see what happens. Here we go. Oh, wow. Well, it's going through the plate there. And we're starting to get some circular shapes, especially up close. You can see that it's forming circles. And then it's sort of an offset circle here and on the other side. So what's this indicating? So magnetic field lines are straight down the center. And then it's starting to curve off and then start to form circles close and these ones are running out and then I'll bring in this coil, we'll zoom out a little bit just remember what this one looks like, it was a set of five coils and each one of these has about 15 turns on it now it's a little bit centre here, we've got the iron powder lining up and it's curving at the edges. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. And I'll just move a demonstration around so we can have a look at what's happening. So we can see some detail there. We can see that the it's curving right around this end. And then as it goes along the coils, it seems to go in and out. Just have a quick look at all the displays again. So our five coils, we can compare that to the single coil. And there's some definite similarities there. It's got through the center of the coils. We have them lining up and the curvature at the ends, but it's just happening at the ends and something different is happening along the edge there. And then just have a look at the first one we looked at, which was the big square coil. And we can see that this one's actually forming large circle round here. And then if we do look carefully on this, we can see that down through the center of the coil, they are actually lining up a little straighter here. Let us start by calculating the field produced by a straight wire. Well, thinking of a straight wire like a conductor like this one, we can see that uh, the current is pointing in that direction. So the charges are going to be moving along this uh, conductor and the amount of charge that is going to mm, go through say imagine that we have a cross-sectional counter here the number of charges that will go make it through this counter in a delta time in the time delta t are, is going to be given by the velocity times delta t which is uh, this distance here. So we have the amount of charges so this is uh, the length the length of that divided by t, that's going to give you the this distance, and with that we can calculate. This gives you the current delta q divided by delta t gives you the current times that. This is um, the product of a 
the charge and the velocity that we need for what follows. If we have a charge moving, we're going to represent that by arrow, this blue arrow, and we want to calculate, this one produces a field, as we saw before, produce a field everywhere in the space, everywhere. But I imagine that we want to calculate the field exactly at this point. Well, the way to do this is to use uh, the Biot-Savart law for this configuration. So we have, this would be the direction of our displacement, the displacement of uh, the charge. This will be the position, the vector position of this point, tells you where, where the direction. And this represents the, the magnetic field produced by the motion of this uh, charge. So according to the Viet's of Art Law, we get uh, this gives you that motion there, gives you this. And uh, this is the current flowing. And we have the position vector the displacement, and the distance to the second power. Now, this is the magnetic field produced by this segment. We are taking into account all the charges in, in this uh, shaded area, and all these charges are these. So, if we want for the whole length of the wire, then we have to integrate over the length of the wire, and we're going to get precisely what we saw before. To integrate, we take uh, the field produced by this small segment, which is what we just calculated, this one here. But uh, the, we need to take uh, the component in the proper direction, so we use the, the sign. And the sign is going to begin by this, which is basically y divided by this distance r. That would be the sign of, of theta. And this one we use right here, right here, and we get this as the, the component of uh, the magnetic field produced by that uh, segment. To obtain the field for the whole uh, wire, we need to add the same contribution coming from the different segments. So we need to, we take this and we just add it, we leave outside whatever is constant with respect to x, and here we we'll leave the, what de depends on x, we turn this into a continuous sum, and integrating this, we get this, which uh, in this case is, uh, in our case, is called r, r is going to be the distance from the wire. And the, low, uh, the position of the Oh, the magnetic field is going to be such that it will be uh, at any point it's going to be uh, along a circle and uh, according to the right hand rule so you need to point your thumb in the direction of the current then curl the fingers and you're going to see they curl in this direction so up here the field is pointing out as here and down here the field is pointing in as denoted by the axis here and the magnetic field varies as a function of uh, how far we are from the wire, according to this, where r is the distance to the wire. This is an example. We are told that we, they have a, a, a nichrom wire connected to a 12-volt battery, and we want to know what is the magnetic field one centimeter away from the wire. Well. The magnetic field is calculated by this, where before we use R and now we use D. D is the distance away. But to calculate this, we need to, to know the current, and the, the current is not given, so we need to use Ohm's law to, to find the current, this voltage divided by the resistance. But the, resi the voltage is given, 12 volts, but the resistance is not given, but so we have to calculate it from the fact that it's one meter long, and the diameter, so we can calculate the area, and then, um, we know that it's nichrome. So we come here and we calculate uh, the resistance. Turns out to be, uh, if we use these numbers, of course, this is coming from a table that we used in the previous chapter. So the resistance is 1.1 uh, ohms. So 
we use this one here, we use the 12 volt here, and that gives you a current of 6.28 amps. And we, um, we multiply all of this and we get the result as 1.3 times 10 to 84 Teslas. A quick check. At this point, I ask you to pause the video and read the question and give your answer. And the question is, we have uh, this wire here with the current going from uh, down here up. And um, they want to know the, the ratio of this, how many times this one is uh, larger or smaller than this one. Compared to the magnetic field at point A, the magnetic field B is, and we have different options, but first let us look at the direction. If you, you, if you point your thumb in the direction of the current, you're going to see that the field will be coming out from point A, out of the screen at point A, and into the screen at point B. So they have opposite directions, which means that it can be this answer or uh, this answer, either B or D. But uh, we know that the field is proportional to 1 over R. So this is proportional to 1 over 2, and this is proportional to 1 over 4. So this is going to be half as strong as this one. So the answer is B. The magnetic dipole moment here in the picture i'm showing uh, an electromagnet this uh, as you can imagine is a huge coil that produces a magnetic field that attracts all the this uh, metal from the junkyard those um, big uh, magnets are made out of uh, huge coils and here in this subsection we're going to see the field produced by a coil so we um, imagine that um, the current is coming here, looping around and coming out. So we, we can forget about this part and we're going to have a perfect circle coming here. And we want to find the feel at this point. So we proceed as usual by picking, selecting a small segment that we can take as a straight segment. And then use the Biosabart law to find the feel here. And by symmetry, we see that uh, the only component that will survive is the, the component along X. The rest will cancel. There will be a component pointing up here, one from the other end pointing down that will cancel each other. So we have to end up getting the X component of that. Once that we have that, then we have to do the integral over the, all the little segments. So this is uh, the field produced by, according to the vs Bart law, produced by uh, that small segment DL, this one right here. And it um, goes proportion, inversely proportional to this distance R to the second power, which is going to begin by this. A, a squared, A is the radius, so this is one side of the triangle. X is this distance here, the other side of the triangle. So we have all of that here. Now this gives you the field pointing um, at 90 degrees, like that. And we can break it into components, we can break it into the X component, the Y component. And of course this one is going to be cancelled by a, a sec segment pointing down that has a, an identical uh, Y component in opposite direction. So what we need to do is to get the X component of this and for that we refer to this uh, drawing here to get the the X component of the X component of that we need to do the cos of this angle multiply times the, this vector times the cos of the angle which is this one which is A over R so we're gonna have to multiply this by A over R where, where this is R squared so we do that we multiply times that and we get this. This is multiplying times a to the r and we get a three halves instead of a two halves. For the whole field, we need to go around and integrate. Luckily, this distance does not vary. This r does not vary as we go around. X doesn't vary. A does not vary. 
So everything is constant. All we have to do is just integrate around the DL and we get the, the perimeter of the, the circle, which is two pi R. And two pi kill two pi's from here. And R is A, so it gives you an, uh, an A square here. So this is the field at any point along the axis, along this axis. And it can be in this, in this side or you can be in the other side of the loop. So we have uh, that for a loop like this one, we are, are taking the ideal case like this one. And this, the field, we, we, if we see this sideways, we can see it like this. Look at the fact that here on top, the, the current is moving out this way. And here at the bottom, there's moving in. That is being represented by this dot coming out and this X going in. And the, the field on the X is going to begin by this. Now, what is the field exactly at the center? Well, exactly at the center, X, our X is going to be zero. So we come here and take the, the limit when X equals zero and we get this. And we, instead of calling the radius A, we call it R, then this is what we get. And if instead of having one single loop, we have a, a number N turns, number of, uh, the number of turns is N, capital N, then this gives you the field exactly at the center of the loop. Again, the direction of the field is gonna begin by the right hand rule. What you have to do is take a small segment, say for instance here, point your thumb in this direction, curl the fingers, you're gonna see that the fingers will come out inside of the loop. Coming out means something like this. This is another example. We want to uh, find the current that is needed to produce a magnetic field in one of those uh, loops. It's an n turn loop coil uh, that will produce the a field that is uh, comparable to the magnetic uh, uh, the field the magnetic um, the magnetic field of the earth. So for that we go back to the same expression that we had before and we just solve for the current. This is what we had before. We solve for the current, and now we know that the field has to be that of the, the same magnitude of the Earth's magnetic field, which is 5 to 785. The radius is given is uh, 5 centimeters for the radius. N is the number of turns, 5, and the rest is uh, just a, the constant. And we get uh, that the current has to be 0 0.8 amps. Not much, it can be done. This concludes section four. This is uh, the um, homework problems 11, 12, and 14. And that's it.